Okay. Cut. Uh, begin scene. <laughs> begin scene. Internet toy box. Uh, what you'll see over over here is a what I call the close-up camera, and what you'll see down here, uh, side below my name, is the uh, stage camera, so-called stage camera. Both cameras um, are mounted, are, they are both cheap Logitech webcam cameras. And uh, they're mounted onto uh, servos. And uh, they can be controlled from the chat venue uh, in ways like this. So, for example, I have these higher level commands, like, for example, I might say stage left, which, or stage right, which moves the stage camera. I'm going to point to it to the right position. Turns out it was already in that position. If I move the stage camera to the middle position, it moves to the left over there, and it shows a robot which we're going to play with a little bit later, hopefully. So another robot, actually, which uh, you can find information about that on that Hackaday URL down at the bottom of the screen. Um, send the stage camera to the left. I can also do the same with the close-up camera, which currently I think is in the right position. I can send it to that middle position, which is oh, right about here. My fingers there, and uh, I can send it to the uh, left position over here and over there, which is approximately where my synthesizers are usually, but uh, not so much at the moment. And we'll send it back to the right where it has a nice view of the circuit which is in control of this right now um, and actually the next generation of said circuit this is the well this is the current generation this is actually my little hack version which i just mess around with this is the one that is currently in control of the cameras uh, at the moment um, let's send the stage camera back towards the right again and over there you should see that there's also a so you're seeing the same the same view from two different directions you see just one of the cameras is more colorful than the other um, that's all so <clears throat> there's also a uh, Spock here we list we miss you Leonard anymore um, <clears throat> so we have a little Lego Spock and he's mounted on a servo too we also can control him by saying god what was the command like uh, our model I think will change his position and uh, actually gives him a random position when we do that. Man, I'm going to have to revoice over this whole thing because my, my throat's all scratchy for some reason. Um, okay, so um, also there is a little lamp pointed at him and I can control that with this lamp command. And that's me uh, doing my Marco Rubio uh, impersonation. Hey, Phoenix Plays. How's it going, man? Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to have to do this voiceover again. This is terrible. It's supposed to be doing a run-through of this thing. So I can turn the lamp off with stuff like this. Then we'll turn the lamp off, and that turns the lamp on. And uh, observant people will note that the observant among you will note that it's translated into this low-level syntax. <clears throat> Oh, hey, by the way, Phoenix Place, this is all uh, documented now at the Hackaday URL down there. Uh, Hackaday.io slash DieMasterMonkey. And uh, there's the binaries for Java uh, for the serial bridge. Oh, that's a good segue. I get to the, uh, how, so how the heck is all this working? And people will be like, oh, I get the basic idea. Here we are on the Hackaday site. Uh, and there's a URL there now for it. Um, and there's uh, a diagram. Uh, so let's look at the diagram. Um, I'm going to add build instructions and stuff to this too, but uh, at the moment at least there is the information and links to the GitHub and the files, all that other stuff, and the source code for Arduino. Pre-compiled for binaries for Java, not source code yet. Soon, I just got to clean it up a bit. Okay, so what the heck is going on here? Here's the diagram. Forgive me, uh, viewers who have seen this diagram before. Uh, this, as well, of course, is on the Hackaday site. 
So, what's going on in this diagram? Uh, well, first of all, you guys can't see the whole thing, so that's a problem, huh? Let's see if I can make it so you can see it. Again, background beats tonight provided by uh, Arvinez. He's on YouTube. Uh, his URL is uh, there. So it's going to be cool. All right, so I'm going to put this diagram up on the screen for a minute. Let people, I should have a way of putting something full screen. Yeah, well, I don't. Okay, well, the diagram is available at the Hackaday, at the Hackaday URL anyways. So, uh, as no one was ever here. <laughs> okay, so, information about the, um, uh, about the Internet Toy Box is at the URL, hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey. Oh, I'm getting back into the swing of this, good. Um, haven't done any talking shows for a while. They've just been all been beat shows. Um, so, at the Hackaday URL, one will find um, links to the Jit, uh, GitHub. On the GitHub, there is uh, all the stuff you need uh, if you want to do it yourself, except for uh, build instructions, which I'm going to be adding to the Hackaday uh, place. So, this I kind of... Um, I was kind of putting this off a bit for a couple of reasons. One, because I was hoping to find a way to productize it because I would like to eat a sandwich. But uh, I think I've come to realize that if there's opportunities for eating sandwiches in uh, that arise from this effort, that they won't necessarily be negatively impacted by releasing the, uh, the source and the components and the capability for people to make it themselves. So in other words, there's no reason not to. So, and it was also slowing it down. So, anyways, it is now possible to build your own Internet Toy Box kit uh, and put your viewers in charge of your cameras and all that. That's pretty cool. Um, um, so, uh, go there, hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey. There's a couple of projects there. There will probably be more in the future. While I do my Marco Rubio impersonation. And I'll be adding build instructions uh, there for it too, which is what you really need at uh, those sites. So, and uh, also a shout out to Flying um, someone, I forgot. <laughs> um, yeah, so actually Phoenix Blaze, good point. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's still opportunities to monetize some of this. And I don't even so much monetize, just uh, eat a sandwich would be good. So, hey, I wonder if you're on this, I wonder if you're on this picture. Because, uh, so some of these pictures in here are from, from the stream. Here's D-Dog playing with the Lego NXT robot. And, uh, God, being Dev Snowy were the two of the first people to discover the camera, <laughs> actually. And here's me describing the configuration file. Okay, back to the diagram. Uh, so, in the diagram, one sees that there are really two main components here. There is a... Uh-oh, no background music. Um, okay, there is a serial bridge, is what, I, been, what how I refer to this thing as the serial bridge. Um, it's a Java component that is running in this window over here. Why am I reaching way up there? What the hell? Um, oh, hey, Flying Void. Yeah, that's his name, Flying Void. Yes, shout out to Flying Void, a, a another actual real-time viewer. <laughs> Which are rare. Actually, I get more. I get most of my views. Um, not to say I get a lot, but the ones I get are usually on the replay traffic. Okay, so um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to stop the bridge for a moment. This way, we'll see. Um, it's a Java, so it runs on, actually I developed it on Linux, so it actually works, it was originally written for Linux and it runs on Windows, I'm running it on Windows right now, haven't tested it on Mac, 
I'll be interested to find if it runs on Mac and I have access to those capabilities. So that's simply a, a batch script uh, to start um, to start the thing. You know, of course, there's a Java component and there's a library, so it needs a path in there. Uh, it uses the RxTx library. Um, actually, the MFC version of the RxTx library. I'm pointing to it right here. And this is actually mentioned in the, I cover all of this in the project page on, um, on, oops, how did I end up here? On the project page on Hackaday.io. Um, this is all covered and will be covered in further detail. Um, so I was going to look for that. And at the GitHub actually does include these components. Uh, so it has everything you need there to get that started. Back to the window. I'm still doing this the wrong way. Okay, so in the startup routine, we actually see quite a bit of insight about how the thing works. Uh, it reads its configuration from a configuration file uh, called toybridge.cfg. That's the only thing that's hard coded in the thing is the fact that you must do this. Uh, and make this configuration file. There's one included in, at the GitHub um, address, and uh, it has defaults that you'd need for most of it. It supports comments, and the comments describe the options and how to use them. Uh, there's a section for configuring the IRC credentials. A little bit of background, the uh, Twitch um, chat. Uh, Twitch chat is IRC, as are the chat as is the um, means powering the chat behind several other uh, venue systems like that. Um, you'll see in the chat, actually, see that Dive Master Monkey seems to have said Monkey Box 0.2, but that actually came from the uh, from the bridge itself, the bridge program, which is running right now. So when it logs in, that's the only thing it ever says in chat. Um, it's just to tell you that it, it's there. So in the configuration file you provide the necessary information including where it's going to log in and the port uh, if it should say something when it logs in uh, the channel which is your twitch username the login name which is also your twitch username and your twitch login credentials which we'll get to shortly uh, this is not supported yet here is an example of the twitch login credentials You'll notice that they are kind of funky looking and they're not just a password. That's because they are what we call an OAuth token. Um, and here it is. Uh, how to get that, I will include in the uh, build instructions. If you want to know, just ask me and I'll send you a link. There's a place to get it. Um, so you don't really put your password in there. You put this in there. But still, mind you, this is sensitive data, so you'll want to keep control of this. This is not mine, obviously. This is just an example, so don't worry about that. Um, let's see. So these are the actual settings that I'm using, except that you can't see my creds because I've hidden them down at the bottom of the configuration file so that you don't see them. Uh, the next section, you define the serial bridge. So back to the diagram. Do, do, do. Oh, this is working OK as a way of explaining this crap. OK, so back in the diagram, you won't find in the serial bridge. Uh, I hope you can see it, that it uh, connects by serial port to the, um, okay, uh, so it connects by serial port to the um, USB uh, toy box controller, which is the Arduino, and uh, optionally by Bluetooth to an NXT or Bluetooth type robot, Bluetooth controlled robot, and uh, it receives the instructions from the chat venue. So it, it has two connections, right? It's got like one one leg in the chat venue and then one leg connected to the devices that you want to control. So the first half of the configuration that we've just been looking at, um, again I'm using the wrong keyboard, uh, the first half of the configuration that we were looking at was all about that first arm, all about the left arm in the chat venue. So this is where that gets configured. How does it connect to the chat venue? How does it get in? Where does it go? All that kind of crap. Um, now we're in the second section, which is the other arm, right? So the right arm is connected to the device by serial or by Bluetooth. Um, so how is how is that defined? And um, these are the settings in here. And of course, there's comments that give standard uh, 
some some standard hints for different operating systems. Uh, as I say, originally the system was written under Linux, and I've had no problem running it under Windows. All you do is change the COM port symbolic names. Uh, interesting programmer side. These are symbolic names. They that's all they ever are. In order to get an actual handle to a serial device, you have to interrogate the system for all of its serial ports and then find which one matches the name that the user gave you. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Anyways, but it does that. Um, so, oh, oh, that's right, new feature. I just now remembered that I added this feature the last time I did a stream uh, about this project. I added the uh, multiple units feature so that I can address, oh, yeah, so I can address both the, the new Internet Toy Box. Uh, I should figure out which camera I'm going to use. New Internet Toy Box, as well as the existing Internet Toy Boxes, which I'm using to control my real cameras for my real shows. Um, uh, hey, Phoenix, Phoenix plays. Yeah, Com, Com4 is pretty common, actually, but it's going to depend on, like, everybody's stuff. Hey, check it out. I noticed that somebody subscribed. Welcome, Mr. Donnie One, and um, I apologize to everyone who ever subscribed that I didn't notice that you subscribed, because I'm really bad at hosting, basically. So, but this time I noticed because I have the alert thing up, and yeah, Mr. Donnie. So, the clip is from 1984, by the way, the 1956 version of 1984. Thanks for uh, subscribing, Mr. Donnie. Um, Although, I always like to say uh, that lurkers power the channel. <laughs> Most of my viewers are lurkers. Lurkers power the channel. But uh, subscribers are even more powerful. Okay, so I just now remembered that the last time I did a show about this project, I added support for multiple uh, units. So, in other words, you can have more than one Arduino attached. Which I had to do, because even though no one else in the world even has one internet toy box, I have two. And, hey, and another one, uh, GM977. Thanks for subscribing, man. Um, so now it has support for two of them, and this allows me to test both the existing system and the uh, and the new one, you know, which is all fancy-fied. So, bridge timeout is not used. That's why it's negative one. What is this bridge pins? Oh, it says disused. Well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing I put some comments in these things. You see, that's for me often, too, as well. Um, so on some Unix systems, you need to add you need to add these two options. So as I say, originally it was written under Fedora 20, and I found that on Fedora 20, and I've also tested it on the Pi, which was interesting. Um, these two options had to be enabled. Um, so again, all the information for this is down at that hackaday.io address, hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey. And this is the uh, Internet Toy Box project. It's uh, oh, over here, over here. Uh, and there's a diagram there, explains all of that. I'm going through that a little bit. So back to the configuration. Oh, bridge peers. This is where it gets interesting. So in the diagram, back to the diagram here, you'll see that um, the way this works basically in the chat, I say something like, um, oh, hey, Phoenix Blaze, and everyone else, welcome. So when I say something like stage uh, right, and it moves the camera, oh, it's already on the right. Is it already on the right? I say stage left, uh, stage mid, and it moves the camera to the middle position, um, wherein there's one of these evolutionary genetic algorithm ro robots that we were talking about earlier. It's one of my other projects there. So when that happens, that's in this upper left-hand box right here. So in this example, it says stage 93, which is also valid syntax. Uh, you could say stage and a number, and it will just go there to that position, I believe. Unless, oops, but you have to spell it correctly. By the way, anybody can do this. You don't have to be me. And that's actually the way I built it. Hello. Oh, I hate that view. Anyways, this is the this is the view that I use for my live shows. This is why I made the system in the first place, because I'm a solo performer, and um, I wanted to have more, multiple camera views, and I didn't want to be like switching cameras with my feet or something. And uh, so this way I can focus on my performance, and viewers can move the cameras around however they like. And probably more useful for some people's shows, and if they have a wider area where they're doing lots of stuff, 
So it's also kind of led to me expanding my show um, a bit. So when I do stage 50, it'll send the camera back. Oh, if you type it incorrectly, stage 50, it'll send the camera back to 50 position. I don't know where that is. Eh, approximately there. Okay, so where is this happening? Uh, this is all happening in this upper left-hand box. We're in the chat venue, and it's IRC for Twitch. I'm working on YouTube support, which is a bit more cumbersome, but it's on the way. Um, when something like that is typed in, it is not sent directly to the serial bridge. Um, this is by design. Uh, I'm starting to... Well, we're going to revisit this, but at the moment, we're talking about how this works right now. So you type in a high-level command like stage 93. I'll do this now, stage 93. Okay, and you'll notice on the chat that MooBot, which is a popular uh, chat bot, really popular with Twitch streamers, I use it, um, that MooBot has said this. It said some weird string, B1P08893. If you're an Arduino net, uh, microcontroller, hardware control device, type person, Internet of Things person, you're already thinking that could be like device number one, pin eight, sending an analog signal of 93. And yeah, that's correct. That's what that is. So um, the high level syntax like this or like lamp on gets translated into a low level syntax like B1P13D1, which means device number one, pin 13, to which an LED is attached, uh, turn it on, digital one, right? I might be changing. I'm changing the syntax a little bit. It's adjusting over time. But um, the high-level syntax, lap on, lap off, uh -huh, uh, gets translated into the low-level syntax by the chatbot. That is by design, and this is the current incarnation. Um, at the moment, users see it. That's for diagnostic purposes. It is possible to get it so that I own, they would not see it. Um, so, anyways. From that upper left-hand bot, when you type in stage 93 or lamp on, it gets sent to the community chat bot, which is acting basically as a syntax reflector, right? So it sees the high-level syntax. It has a mapping over in MooBot, which I can show you, but MooBot users already know where this happens. These are just regular MooBot commands. And MooBot's instructions are to respond with this, B1P13D1, when you say lamp on. Um, this way, Users of the Internet Toy Box, I mean performers, streamers, video streamers, uh, can make their own commands up, map them to their own devices any way they want. Uh, they can rely on the chatbot's user access controls. Um, there are features like a MooBot that say, well, users can only run this command if they're of a certain level, or if they're a subscriber, or it's, it's between these hours, or if I'm performing this show and not the other show. And so that way I don't have to write any of that. And immediately, the Internet Toy Box supports all of those features. Um, so you have user controls. You don't have to make it like I'm, I just let anybody run the camera, but you could limit it to admins or something like that, uh, mods or whatever, uh, using MooBot. Um, it also supports uh, Nightbot. I've already tested it with Nightbot. It works just as well. And you think, well, how does this work? That works because in the configuration file, we're back in the config file, uh, there's a thing called bridge peers. Bridge peers means from whom do you accept these low-level commands? So as I say, everybody can type in, uh, yeah, see, Mr. Donnie, yay. Um, so yeah, so anybody can type in these high-level commands, lamp off. But if Mr. Donnie tried to type in like B1P13D0 or D1 to turn the lamp on, he would find that it wouldn't work. And uh, even though that's the correct syntax to turn it on, B1P13D1 would be the correct syntax, but it, it won't accept it from him because he's not on the list. And according to the list, uh, he is not among the so-called bridge peers. So bridge peers is where you put in yourself so that you can test the damn thing and uh, your chatbots. And I have two of them in there, both MooBot and Nightbot, because I've tested them to make sure that they work. So it works just like you think it does. Um, well done, sir. Excellent. Great test, Mr. Donnie. And uh, yes, hey, we girl industry. That, nah, that's not really, that's a spam thing. I got to get rid of that. Okay, so 
So that's how that, that works. Um, Mubot is the one who sends the low-level syntax, and you would think, oh, well, like anybody could send it, and there's no controls. Well, that's not true, because before the uh, serial bridge accepts a command from a low-level command from someone, uh, or any command, it ensures that they are on the bridge peers list. So you have to be on the bridge peers list. So that's going from the first box up in the upper left down to the community chat box, which bounces back the low-level syntax also supports user permissions and all that other kind of crap that I really don't want to write yet. Um, and then and then that gets to the serial bridge, which is the Java component. We're watching the output of it right now. Um, oh, and you'll see that right now it's doing its job. It's accepting, uh, it's accepting commands from people in the chat and uh, translating them to low-level commands. It also has to handle like IRC responding to pings and crap like that. Uh, so it does that. Um, it also has support for Bluetooth, and I tell you the truth, cannot for the life of me remember how that works. And I know that it works because I've got like video of people driving the robots with it, and but I, I just can't find it. So I'm gonna actually I could look at the pictures probably. So uh, again, at the URL hackaday.io slash diemastermonkey. You'll find uh, there's a couple of different projects there. And uh, one of them is the Internet Toy Box project. Oh, the other one we were saying earlier, IQ0, Evolving Unprogrammed Robots, just won the IQ0 or the Adafruit Pi0 project. <gasps> I wonder if naming it Zero helped. Hmm. Well, marketing counts too, man. So, anyways, you'll see a couple of projects there. The one you want is the Internet Toy Box for live streaming. Uh, therein, you'll find uh, at least video of people driving the robot, so I know it works. Just cannot for the life of me remember. Oh, there's the syntax on the screenshot. Yes, okay, good. Well, at least there's some documentation of how that works. Uh, it turns out DDog747 actually has tested the NXT robot. I think he was the first person ever to drive a Lego robot over Twitch. It was kind of creepy and hilarious at the same time all right so uh, oh okay so what else will you find there you will find um, importantly the here we go you'll find a link to the github on the github there is the uh, again I'm using the wrong keyboard on the github there is the Arduino source code um, the pre-compiled binary for the serial bridge the configuration file so you don't need to change the uh, binary and apologize. I'm working on the source. It will be out soon and uh, the MFZ RXTX serial library uh, that it uses and I highly recommend you use that one and I'll soon be adding build instructions uh, so it'll be easier to put one together but it's all pretty much in there and the videos and uh, oh and here's the configuration for your Lego NXT robots you just tell it what COM port it is attached to um, I haven't tried it over USB yet. I really want to, but I have tried it over Bluetooth. And so once you've got your Lego NXT robot connected over Bluetooth and it has a and it has a COM port assigned, you can put it in here and use it to communicate uh, to control your put your users in control of your. Oh yeah, once it's on here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's not even uh, it's not in existence at the moment. Actually, it's over here. But there's no batteries in it, and uh, I haven't tested it for a while. So, yeah, so, oh, right. So the other thing is it takes compound commands now. Um, so that enables, like, a long string of low-level commands to be turned into a, like, turn I've had here. Okay, there we go. Uh, so that's the Internet Toy Box uh, information on that URL. And uh, away we go. Uh, there's the configuration file. Here's the source code. It's in Java. It's really ugly. It's not quite. It's not quite the ugliest code ever. But it's. But you don't need that um, yet. The bind, pre-compiled binaries uh, jar file is available on the GitHub address over here. And again, all that's over on the uh, 